Hello, my name is Anya, and today we are going to make a search box using two different methods. The first thing I'm going to do is set up the database. I'm going to make a thing, let's call it a fruit. And that fruit is going to have a name, which is just going to be a text field. Now, I'm going to go in and just manually add some data with that. I'm going to give it a name and create. I just went ahead and added some fruits into the database. Now we can set up our repeating group. I want a repeating group of type fruit that is just going to show all of the fruits in the database. Now that its type of content is fruit, we want a text field to show the current sales fruits name. Then let's make sure we accidentally set a fixed number of rows. So let's just uncheck that. And now it'll show all of the fruits. If we preview that. We can see that everything works as expected. Now, what if I want to search for a particular fruit? Well, that's where the search comes in. And we're going to do this two ways. This is the first way, and let's see how it works. When I put an input, such as searching for plum right over here, I start with the P. Now, apple, peach, and plum all show up because they all have P's. Then when I proceed to type in the whole thing, give it a sec, only plum shows up. This icon only appears when there is an in when there is a value in this input, and when I click it, that value gets cleared and the icon disappears. Let's set this up. Now the first thing that we're going to do is create a group to house all of the different elements of the search. This is integral to it working, which you will see in a little bit. Now I'm going to just take an input form and we can call it input search with the placeholder being search for a fruit. As you saw, when this input has a value, an icon popped up. So let's add that. This icon is just going to be this X, but it's not going to be visible on page load. And it's only visible when the input's search's value is not empty. If we preview this, we can see that when we add a value into the input, this pops up, which is exactly what we want happening. But now let's set it up so that when you click on this, this value gets cleared. Do this by adding a workflow. We want to reset the data of group search, which if you remember is the group that houses this input. If we preview this now, we can see that when we add something here, this pops up and when we click it, the value disappears. Now let's set it up so that the value here affects what's happening in the repeating group. Now, when we do our search for fruits, we want to check to make sure for the fruit in question, its name contains whatever value is in the input search. If we preview this now, we can see that we were able to create a search box. This is the second way to do it. Anything I put into the input doesn't affect the repeating group until I click this search icon. Now you can see that the repeating group is correctly reflecting the input's value. When I click this again, it clears. Let's set this up. If you watched the first part of this video, you would see that the setup is very similar. I'm going to create a group. I'm going to call that group search. 
this is going to house an input and add it here and this is going to be the search box we'll just call it input search i'm going to make the placeholder search for a fruit now we saw that there is an icon so we are going to add that here initially it was this magnifying glass search icon and then it became the close icon which is an artifact of the custom state state search active this is similar to a variable or something to that effect except it's housed on this icon I'm also going to add search value as a custom state and it's going to be a type text and you'll see why that's relevant in a little bit. Now what we're going to do is we're going to check when this icon's search is active. This is equivalent to saying search active is yes. We want this icon to actually be the close icon. Right now, there is no workflow with it. So if we preview it, we would just see the search icon and the input search. So before we do that, I'm going to put some logic behind it. I'm going to set the state of this icon. When it is clicked, I want the search active to become yes, and I want the search value to become the input searches value. But this is only when the search isn't active to begin with. I'm just going to copy and paste that for the reverse when the search is active. Then I want to make it no because you're clicking it to clear the search. And the search value is going to be empty, which is what the input searches value is going to be after this workflow completes. Then I'm going to reset the data of that group search, which is what houses this input search. If we preview that, we can see that we can add an input here. For the sake of it, I'll do a legible word. And when we click this, the icon not only changes, the search becomes active and the search value becomes banana, which is the input's value. When I click the X, you can see that the input cleared and the search active became no and the search value is empty. Now let's connect these two. When we do search for fruits, we want, whoops, when we do the search for fruits, we want to check that the name contains the keywords that are in the input. And remember, the keywords in the input are stored in this icon's search value. And again, we always want to ignore empty constraints. If we preview this, we can see that everything works as expected. And we were able to make a search filter.